Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's March the 9th, 2022. Welcome to What Now America. I'm Tim Apatrell, your host. And today's title is Biden blocks Russian oil. He'll take heat. Uh, Cynthia Lee Sinclair will not be able to join us today, but um, in her absence, I, uh, I have a quote that she found, and it's a quote from President Zelensky, and it's a good one. And it's the following. Every drop of Russian oil sold is a drop of Ukrainian blood spilled. And that speaks for itself. Uh, yesterday, as an executive order, President Biden ordered the boycott of all Russian energy products into the United States. And that's the topic that we're here to discuss. And I'm pleased to announce that we have Jay Fidel and Karen Buzzard with us. Winston Welch is on assignment and Cynthia Lee Sinclair is on assignment as well. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Morning. We have a lot of assignments going on, eh? Yeah, we're busy here. You know, uh, what now, America? We don't, we don't uh, sit around and watch CNN all day. And we certainly don't watch Fox. So uh, we're out there in the field making things happen, Jay. <laughs> hey, Jay, I got, you on, uh, I got you on my screen. Question to you. What kind of support will President Biden get from the GOP on this, this ban, this boycott of Russian, not only oil, but also certainly natural gas products? You have to see this as a dynamic, Tim. You know, like if you if you follow the news and you do check cable, including Fox News, there are the same events happening every day. What do we see? Let me let me identify. We see people getting killed by the carload in Ukraine by bombs from the air, mostly and artillery, long range artillery, and and uh, nothing nothing that has happened. The sanctions has slowed that down. As a matter of fact, it's gotten worse. Um, and this morning, there was big news about a huge maternity hospital uh, that was blown to smithereens. And all these people were killed, including maternity mothers. Ah, oh, God. All right. So that, that's but it's a regular drumbeat. And the regular drumbeat is that, uh, that Putin keeps on doing it and keeps on repressing the uh, Russian people. This news that a lot of them are leaving. Tens of thousands are leaving Russia because they're apparently able to do that if they have the money to live elsewhere. They're leaving Russia. They can't stand it anymore. It's their way of protesting, although they can't protest uh, in public. And um, news reporters from all kinds of media are leaving Russia because they don't want to spend 15 years in jail. But it's a regular drumbeat. And, um, you know, for the same, there's a regular drumbeat about what happened to the Polish uh, MiGs. You know, that's a drumbeat over like almost, well, 10 days anyway. And nothing has happened until last night we heard more um and that deal seems to be quote untenable and i would like to talk with you about it today um and then finally you know there's there's the us there's the gop and its principal purpose in the world today is to undermine voters and undermine biden okay and it's been you know relatively mm, bipartisan that they don't like what's going on in in ukraine um, but, you know, here's my point to answer your question. The news cycle moves on. It's dynamic. So if you ask me, you know, whether he's going to get cooperation from the GOP, it's only a matter of time, days, probably, before they start attacking him on everything he is doing in Ukraine. Watch this space. And that includes oil. OK, let me get to that point, because, you know, the House is going to take this up. The Senate's going to take it up. I suspect there is bipartisan support. Uh, President Biden announced that when he uh, yesterday, when he said he was going to have enact an executive order to boycott all Russian energy products. So where's the hypocrisy of of a vote that supports the boycott? Yet, uh, as you said, time marches on. A week later, they're bludgeoning President Biden over the fact that gas prices are higher at the pump. Where's the hypocrisy in that? How about everywhere? How about everywhere? How about GOP equals hy hypocrisy, hypocrisy? Um, and and I, you know, I don't think there's any question. Is they going to look for an opening? They already are looking for openings to show that he's not doing a good job. And of course, they're going to have a lot of people in this country supporting the notion that we shouldn't be paying higher gas prices. That it's all his fault. And um, he is he is uh, destroying the economy of the of the United States by his moves. And what's really interesting about that is it, it, what it means. I mean, I think that's what's going to happen is already starting. 
Uh, what it means, though, is that a, a good number of people, tens of millions of people in this country, uh, don't believe that what's happening in Ukraine has any effect on them. They don't care. Eastern Europe, long way. Um, but, you know, Putin, long way. Um, and it, um, so that they can reject that and they can say, uh, it, you know, I don't want to pay gas prices, uh, additional gas prices. Well, the United um, States has had proxy wars in the past. I, Vietnam comes to mind and certainly uh, certain many other ones uh, with Russia. And uh, um, the, the United States American population seemed to rally around the initial phases of these kind of proxy wars. Uh, Vietnam went horribly off track uh, and half the country was protesting against it. But the bottom line is we tend to rally around uh, a military action uh, in support of our, our friends and or NATO. Um, what seems to be wrong with today's society as to um, saying yes to one thing, saying yes to an embargo, and then a week later saying, uh, this is not what we wanted? Everything, Tim, is being politicized. Everything. This morning, there was uh, an article in the paper about a guided missile cruiser a Navy ship that cost billions of dollars, where the commanding officer <clears throat> sued the Navy um, because they wanted to remove him from the ship because he refused to take a vaccine in violation of Navy policy. Um, and, the, and, and, and he won in a federal court with a federal MAGA judge in Florida. He won. Um, this is really something. And the Navy, what the Navy did, and, and this is to my point, the Navy took the ship off the line. They said, okay, you want to leave uh, uh, somebody who doesn't comport with Navy requirements for vaccines? Uh, you want to force us, you're going to force us to keep somebody we don't think is qualified to command a ship like that, um, to keep, to leave him on the ship? We're taking the ship off the line. We're decommissioning the ship. Um, now, now you have real fragmentation in the military. So the military now, right to the core of its, uh, you know, good order and discipline is being politicized. Uh, really awful. And you say to yourself, well, OK, we, we need uh, the military to go hither and yon, maybe even into Poland, whatever, NATO, whatnot. Um, but this kind of thing is happening. What I'm telling you is that everything is capable of being politicized and things are being politicized. You never thought could be, should be or would be politicized. It's different. It's unprecedented. Great point, Jay. Thank you. Karen, to what degree will this boycott be felt in the United States? And will the boycott um, basically uh, overshadow the already existing uh, increase at the pump uh, due to the threat of uh, Russian oil and its impact around the um, consumers of Russian oil? Uh, President Biden quoted, I think he cited a, a 75 cent increase at the pump already before Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, so will Biden take the hit on all price increases at the pump? Uh, I think I agree with Jay. It's just a matter of time before the Republicans are going to use this as a wedge issue uh, in the uh, upcoming election. They're going to, uh, right now, they're all, you know, supporting his... Does that seem patriotic uh, to you? Uh, it's been turned into a kind of a patriotic event. Yes, in that sense. Yeah, I think so. Because both sides are, you know, um, see, at least in Congress seem to be on board. In fact, they gave him, I've got how many billions of dollars, but the Congress increased even what he asked for. Uh, this is to send to Ukraine. So I think it's very political, but the other side of it is this inflation area issue which is going to mean that from what I've read, they're predicting the gas prices are going up to over $5 a gallon. And this is a key issue, I think, particularly in the Midwest where a lot of people drive long distances to go to work. So, um, you know, in cities, there's other ways, other kinds of transportation, but um, also, so I think that that's could become a key issue in the uh, election, you know, the fact the higher gas prices, even though, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Um, right now they're supporting it, uh, but, you know, uh, if Ness, we've been living in a cave for the last few years, we know they can turn on a dime and then uh, switch it the other direction. Well, okay, maybe it's just me, but um, once, you know, you and the polls certainly support what you're saying is 70, 80% of Americans support some kind of um, 
oil embargo from Russia because they're in agreement and support of Ukraine. But it just seems to me more than hypocritical. It seems unpatriotic to support an action and then two weeks later because the news cycle uh, you know, is changing or drones on, uh, they change their minds. And I, I don't know if I'm used to that. Uh, I guess that's uh, how things are today. Uh, your thoughts about that? Uh, well, you know, I was just thinking of the Supreme Court is sitting there right now hearing a case that's going to uh, disempower the EPA to regulate climate change. And from what I'm reading, they're uh, about to do so. So talk about hypocrisy, you know, uh, people think climate change is the number one issue and we're still fighting over fossil fuels. <laughs> Uh, maybe this would be a good a chance for Biden to to rally around the uh, you know green flag and say we're going to start you know as a country mass producing green uh, products rather than you know worry about the oil again. I'm reminded of the movie Don't Look Up. That's all I can say to your comment. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. I do have one other question: Is uh, what other additional sanctions should the United States consider against Russia? other than what we've done. Uh, there were some articles in today's paper about, uh, uh, in fact, President Biden took uh, executive steps about cryptocurrencies and how Russia can avoid a lot of these sanctions uh, by the use of cryptocurrencies. Well, it seems like we've gone about as far as we can go for now till we see the impact because it's not so much, I think the US that will be impacted, but Europe because they uh, pay a higher price for, you know, uh, they use much more Russian oil and also another major product that's being banned is wheat. And also they get a lot of their wheat production from Russia and formerly Ukraine. So uh, the uh, I guess the question is how much of our policies will come back to bite us in the face if we, we need to kind of see what the impact is on um, Europe and ourselves. Okay. Jay, same question to you. What, what additional sanctions, uh, either the government or uh, non-government entities? I mean, we have Coca-Cola, we have McDonald's, Starbucks, and Visa, who have voluntarily pulled out their business from Russia. What, what other sanctions in your mind uh, do you think are worthwhile? <clears throat> um, I got an email last night with a list of all the American companies, or notable American companies, big American companies, that had not pulled out of Russia. And so to the extent that he has jawboned, um, you know, these few um, popular brand, you know, companies, mostly food, I think, uh, at least the ones you listed, um, you know, th there's a lot of them that have not been jawboned. They haven't they haven't responded to him. So I think I would I would um, I would do that. I would go to all those companies. I'd make a telephone call or have my staff make a telephone call and say, hey, how about it? Because if you don't do this, we are going to make this list really, pop, really, really public and you're going to look terrible. Um, and, you know, if you want to have a friend at a White House, you better listen to me. Uh, now, that's leadership. You know, that, and that has happened before. Uh, unfortunately, I, you know, I don't think the country really believes most people in the country or a great number of the people in the country don't believe that Ukraine matters. Doesn't matter. Um, that we, you know, we are observing all these deaths every day. It doesn't give them a sense of urgency that we blow up um, maternity hospitals with hundreds of babies killed. Um, I, I just don't understand that. It's, it's like we don't care. Let's uh, retrench into isolation and nationalism. Um, that's where we really like to be. You know, it reminds me of, um, you know, World War II. If, if, let me ask you a rhetorical question. If, if FDR hadn't gotten up there and called it the day of infamy, if the Japanese had not attacked Pearl Harbor, would we have had, would we have been involved in that war? Not then, not then. Nobody wanted it. There were a lot of pro-German sympathizers uh, on the mainland uh, that were advocating against any war with Germany. And nobody really cared about a war with Japan. It was too far away. If the, ja the Japanese and Yamamoto's big mistake was bombing Pearl Harbor because they got us involved. Now, there's no event like that right now. Okay, Ukraine is half a world away. That's where we are. And it costs money. It's going to cost, um, you know, inflation, price of gas, all kinds of pain in our economy. 
And I don't think he's got, you know, the U.S. Um, convinced of that. And the, and the GOP is not going to help him convince the U.S. of that. So over time, mark my words, connect the dots a week or two away on this very show, uh, Tim and Karen, we're going to be talking about how the, mm, the unanimity of the U.S., the, um, you know, bilateral, um, mm, what am I looking for, uh, bipartisan um, you know, feeling about Ukraine to support Ukraine is going to dissipate. Furthermore, in the same show, we should also talk about the solidarity in Europe, because there are indications that the solidarity in Europe is also dissipating. And part of that is that Biden is being chicken about the Polish jets. And I think that has a, a very, a very undermining effect on on Poland and other countries in NATO, he, he's being chicken. He's really not bellying up to it. I mean, you have all these people dying. What do they have to say? Zelensky speaks for them and they are dying by the carload. The country is being wrecked into rubble and we are having silly conversations. Are you, um, we've talked earlier, are, are, you, are you convinced we're in a ne Neville Chamberlain moment? Yes. With Ukraine? Yes. If you take a look at this carefully, that's exactly what you see. Uh, you know, I'm reminded of Churchill to say it's very difficult to negotiate when your head is in the mouth of the tiger, and or, or, or so many words he said that. And it seems to me that negotiating later with, with Putin uh, is going to be much more difficult than if we uh, basically provide a more apathy to this issue. Uh, now, we had Under Secretary of State um, her name was Victoria Newland, and she said, with the boycott of Russian oil to the United States and other countries doing the same, uh, we've taken off 70% of revenue off the table for Russia. Um, do you buy that? It hasn't stopped them. The threat of it didn't stop them. The, the de facto uh, you know, action on it over the past week hasn't stopped him. And he is a double down. Well, doesn't Trump it take time for these things to uh, sink in? Uh, will the Russian people, I mean, it's been said that the information that they receive is, is, is like state TV. They only get what they're told. Uh, internet has been shut down. News services have been shut down. Uh, other than mouth to mouth from relative to relative, people really don't know what's going on. I mean, they, they, they know what's going on as they're being told, but they're not necessarily hearing the truth of the situation. But doesn't the fact that all these things are happening indicate that something's amiss, something's not true that Putin is telling them? And don't you think the Russian people will react to that once they know what the truth is? Or are they apathetic as Americans are apathetic? Some of them are apathetic. Some of them understand what's going on. You know, they see the indicators around them and others are just listens to take TV. I think the larger body of Russians just listens to, to state TV um, and they buy what he's saying, that, uh, that uh, Putin is involved in a war against Nazis, which is, a you know, it's a it's a um, what am I looking for? It's a, 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 a stop the steal kind of lie. It's what it is. Stop the steal kind of lie. And he repeats it and all his staff repeats it and state TV repeats it. And, the, and after a while, it, um, you know, it sinks into the nether and everybody believes it, or at least the people who watch state TV because they have nothing else to watch. Now, if you're if you're looking for me to say that this that the Russian people are going to rise up, um, they're not. This is not a democracy. It hasn't been a democracy. It doesn't have a, a democratic uh, history or culture. Uh, they're not going to rise up. It's not going to be 1917 all over again. It is not. Um, and and what you know what I what I believe is going to happen is that uh, he is he is he is going to scare anybody who wants to protest out of the country. They're going to leave. All right. All right. And 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 the result is everybody will be you know will will be quiet about it and he'll have his way now in terms of having his way his group of advisors is smaller and smaller and what you get is putin does what putin wants to do he's pathological he's a wild man uh, as much as any great dictator in the um, 20th century was um, and he doesn't care in fact he intends to level the population and the infrastructure of the Ukraine for its own reasons, and maybe set up a, a new border that looks west to the rest of NATO, um, and then and then see what he can do from there. Um, but he is not going to stop. And every time 
uh, you know, we impose some sort of sanction. Um, he finds count, countermeasures and or ignores it um, or doubles down on his murder. So I, I don't know if there's any rosy side to this. OK, thank you, Jay. Uh, Karen, I'm going to veer off a little bit off the oil embargo uh, topic and, and go to what Jay is suggesting that uh, Putin is not satisfied with just Ukraine and certainly not satisfied with uh, Kiev and Odessa, that he has other other goals in mind. Uh, he seems to be, again, wag, you know, saber rattling about nuclear weapons. And Russia doesn't seem to have a 25th Amendment. Um, Jay suggests that the Russian people really won't go out in the streets and stand uh, unified against Putin and because he's a, he's a dictator. There is no democracy. Uh, what about the, the power structure around Putin? If he really starts to threaten un nuclear weapons as a means to an end, uh, do you foresee them stepping in at some point, even though they don't have a 25th Amendment process? Well, I suppose the power structure are the oligarchs that surround him because, uh, and can I prop him up? Uh, so in that sense, uh, I but he's happy to jail them at a at a snap of a finger. He's yes, he more happy to, to just put them in jail. Well, that's true. I mean, he has uh, certain oligarchs who just puts them in jail. But did you? I just saw recently. I don't know if you saw this in the paper where the U.S. just took uh, the property of some oligarch here in U.S. took it away and sold it to Jeff Bezos uh, at some you know at at discount price. It was some island off the state of New York or something. So I thought that was sort of interesting that A, that well, not so much they would take it away, but they would just immediately sell it to Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing I've noticed, you know, I think that should be part of this discussion is um, they were saying last night that the, uh, even though the stock market is tanking for most of us, the um, defense stocks are going through the roof right now. So, and actually Congress people are starting to buy, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of defense stocks because they realize uh, the war is gonna be profitable for them. Yeah, how do you, so how do you my, spell insider trading? Yeah, so much for my topic last week, which was <laughs> stop insider trading for Congress. Oh, well, <laughs> I guess timing is everything, isn't it, Karen? And Marjorie Taylor Greene herself bought um, thousands of, I don't know how much, but, you know, uh, stock in, I think, Northrop Gum, Gundrum or whatever they're yeah, called. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's just uh, assume that the Russian population is not getting the truth due to the fact that social media has been blocked and news, news services have been basically threatened and they've, they've shuttered up and they're not going to be reporting. So you only have state TV. Uh, how does the word get out to the Russian people about what's really happening in, in, in Ukraine and the, and the war crimes that are happening in Ukraine? How does well, there, the word really there's get an out? article about VPNs, you know, VPNs are popular in China, get by the government, get by the censors. Um, and Explain a, VPN. It's a virtual private network and it allows you to yeah. connect uh, to uh, internet and social media, even though the government is blocking it. Uh, so that's that's becoming popular, but it's only with the literati. Uh, most people don't know what it means. They don't know. What, they don't have it. They can't get it. They couldn't use it. Um, there, but there are certain people in Russia who are Akamai about that and are doing that. I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's a tipping point. Uh, I think what we have here is a um, it, he's using every weapon, every propaganda weapon he can use. Um, and he's using every punishment weapon he can use. It's not lost on anybody that if you protest, you get beaten up, put in jail and, and sent to a faraway place. Maybe that has radioactive food. Um, you know, it's 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 scary and they're scared. Fear is the is a fundamental point in a communist regime. So I, I think he's going to be able to control the people. Um, I think he's going to be able to control the oligarchs. Um, the group around him, they just uh, in his bubble, they do whatever he tells them. Um, and he's making these decisions and yeah. he's pathological. So, uh, that, you know, that is not to me, that is not a notable dynamic. The dynamic we have to watch for is Biden and the GOP and the Senate, all those dynamics. And, and that's happening here. And that will have a huge effect on the solidarity in Europe. Um, and for that matter, 
you know, American, American rhetoric, at least, and maybe American action in Europe. Kieran, to Jay's point, if the Senate and the House do not overwhelmingly support Biden's boycott of Russian oil, will Putin look at that as uh, Biden's out on an island by himself and further be emboldened to do what he pleases? Uh, he might, yes. But I also uh, want to point out that I saw where uh, politicians on both sides of the aisle are now predicting that the Democrats can possibly pull out control of the Senate, not the House, the Senate, because even uh, because of the positive, the bump in his ratings, which are, I think, in the 40s now, they were at 30s earlier. 47. Yeah. <clears throat> Remarkable, like 10, 10 points in the space of a week. But let me add that that is clearly a function of his quote, end quote, leadership uh, in the Ukrainian affair. <clears throat> and okay. to the extent yeah. that he is exposed for being too strong or too weak, and I, I would favor, I would characterize it as too weak myself, uh, in the Ukrainian affair, he could lose that 10 points overnight. Uh, well, they he, could take he, he out, got take it off. overnight, so he could lose it overnight. I agree you with bet. that statement, Jay. Yeah. Karen, uh, <clears throat> continue, please. Oh, so yeah, so I think that uh, if he can, you know, the uh, next election coming up, I think if he can keep uh, kind of the support, uh, there's a chance, you know, that we didn't have that, that we being, uh, I'm a Democrat, uh, didn't have uh, before in terms of uh, maybe pulling out the Senate, because um, the question is how uh, much Republicans are going to um, turn against him before the election. So, okay. Uh, we've, we've run out of time. So, uh, Karen, I'm going to give it to the, the floor to you for your last thoughts on anything, if you wish. Uh, it doesn't have to be about the oil embargo. It could be on anything. What's your last thought? Well, my last thought is I think there um, needs to be kind of an investigation of Congress uh, and their relation to the defense industry, <laughs> because it seems, you know, kind of very unfair that here the people the people that are making the decisions about who's going to war and the, the weapons and so forth are benefiting from those same decisions. I think uh, President Eisenhower had a, a final speech about the military military industrial complex, and uh, that was in the 50s. <laughs> so <laughs> That's true. <laughs> not a lot has changed, but I would agree with you. I absolutely would agree with you. Jay, your last thoughts. Uh, two thoughts. First thought is uh, to, to Karen's point, um, there's no reason why you and me and anybody down the street can't buy defense stocks right now. And if you have any concern about what is going on in Europe, if you do worry about World War III, buy defense stocks. And that's what these guys are doing, the insider trading in Congress will say, hey, it was obvious um, we don't have control so much as we have we, have, we see, as you see in the newspaper, that things are not getting better. Um, but the point I want to make, my second point, is that while we are all distracted with all these things we've been talking about, um, I go to Karen's point also about, or was it your point, Tim, that there may be signs um, that Congress, because of um, you know Biden's new popularity, uh, that the Democrats may take the Senate or the House or, you know, main... No, but I don't think so. There was an article in the New Yorker two or three days ago um, where they outlined that, you know, it was like a magic trick. In this hand, you know, we have <clears throat> all these things going on and all this Ukraine stuff. But in this hand, behind my back, I am working very hard to scuttle uh, fair voting in this country. And uh, it, and this article just went through all the things the GOP was doing, is doing, and will do between now and election day to screw up the voting system every which way. Uh, so many. There was an article this morning about some woman in Colorado. Um, she is running for Secretary of State in Colorado, and she's been indicted for manipulating, actually manipulating voting information. I mean, that's really felonious criminal. Um, so the, the GOP has been really busy right now uh, 
And it's going to be busy. It's going to be busy making laws in all those, um, you know, states. It's it's going to be busy um, finding ways to make make voting into uh, a divisive and racist experience. <clears throat> and the prediction of that article was: there's no way that we're going to have free and fair voting in November. Um, so, and I agree with that. Take a look at the article; you'll see. And so, I think that it's whatever happens in Ukraine, it is very unlikely. Um, that uh, the Democrats will succeed either in the House or the Senate in November. All righty. That pretty much wraps it up. I'm going to just finish. Uh, you said something that uh, caught my, my ire. <laughs> and that is, uh, you know, I call it um, money for misery. Trade on the military stocks. Uh, as a former bond uh, portfolio manager for the feds and private bank, um, I saw these things happen where um, profits were made on, on times of misery. And I always refer to them as ghoulish trades. And I'll continue with that terminology. Uh, I agree with break... you. And notice I did not say that you should buy these stocks. That's correct, you did I not. I only said that you could <laughs> buy these stocks. You, you did not say you should. That is correct. And I'm glad you made that distinction, Jay. Um, but to the brave people of Ukraine and to the brave uh, people who are fighting in the streets, and as Zelensky said, in the forests and on the streets and the riverbanks, uh, we wish them we wish them our support and we wish them our prayers. And now one more point. It's about time they got the Polish jets. To me, that's the most important issue on the table. Let's not fool around. No more chicken. Let's just get the Polish jets to them right now. I agree, Jay. If they can get stingers, they can get jets. So uh, we agree on that. So join us next week. But before I say join us next week, I'd like to say thank you to Jay Fidel and Karen Buzzard. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your insightful comments. Join us next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock for What Now America? And I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and we'll see you then. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.